Hey, this is Mrs. J, and I wanted to go over how to make a puzzle piece using Fusion 360. Um, we'll go over this in class if you need more time, so no worries. So open up Fusion 360 and make sure that you've created a new project. If you don't see this browser over here, it's called the data panel. Click the Rubik's Cube looking thing, and that opens and closes it. Make a new project, call it Puzzle Cube. I'm going to call mine by the period because I have two. And once you save that, double click it. As long as you're in here, all of your work over here will save in this folder. So you can actually close it once you're set up. And then you have more space to work. Okay, so let's say you have a puzzle piece and it's a little confusing. I'll do a generic one. We can do specific ones when I'm back in class. Let me make this a little smaller to fit my recording size. It's really important to shrink Google Chrome behind Fusion because it just crashes it. If you find your Fusion crashing a lot, close your browsers. Get them out of there. Okay, so we're in our new thing. We're not titled. You can't add a name until you've started. So we're going to go to the green plus sign. This is where we always start. We're on solid, green plus sign. I'm going to start over here. You have to consider your puzzle piece. You don't want to make them individually, like individual cubes and keep stacking. You want to see the overall size of your puzzle piece and then try to make the main outline we can add to it later. So we can use the line tool or we can use the rectangle tool and I'll show you both ways. With the rectangle tool, if I click it, you usually start on the origin. It just makes it easier. I can left click and drag and then I can put in my dimensions. We're going to pretend that all those snapping cubes that you've been using are one inch. They're not, but we're going to pretend that. So I'm going to say this is one inch wide by three inch high. High. I can toggle between the two measurements by using the tab key on my keyboard. And then you go like that. If you happen to have clicked it and it closed already with the wrong number, you just double click here and you can say, oh, I meant to say, too far. So you could double click and you can see I'm going to make it three. Okay, so this is, just leave it right there, but look at mine. This is just a flat two-dimensional sketch. It's not an object. It has no depth. So we can change that and we can add on to it. We're going to finish the sketch and we're going to, you have to click that green check mark. Then you can extrude. When you extrude something, it gives it um, depth. It gives it the body, makes a body out of it. So you can pull it either direction. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to say one inch. So this is if I had three of those cubes stacked up straight. And that would, that was all you had to do for that. Hit the home button. It puts it right in front of you. That's a little house over here. It only shows up when your mouse is close to it. So if you ever think it's just gone, just go over there and hover. Okay, so let's say we can't have three. We know our puzzle pieces are four, five, and six cubes. So let's say it's like an L-shaped one, and I want to add something over here. Go right back up to that create a sketch. Hit the plus sign. We're going to ignore those little panels. See those three panels shining, showing up in there? They're like the, the axis. The axis. I can't talk too early, um, but we're just going to click the side of the puzzle piece and you can click any side, depending where you want to add. I'm going to click here. It puts it right in front of you. So if you happen to put something on the back, it's going to rotate it around. Don't let that scare you. We can use the rectangle tool. or We can use the line tool. The rectangle would be easy. I'm going to click that, click the origin. This time I'm going to go up this way. I could probably snap it into one by one, but I'm going to type it just in case. Enter. So you don't have to rotate this, but I'm going to do that so you can see it's just a flat 2D sketch on the side of our first sketch. So if I finish it and I click extrude, I can extrude it an inch or two. So let's say there's two of them sticking out there. I'll say two inch, but yours could have been one. Okay, so we're still good. Your piece, you might have a piece like this, but what if I put another piece here that would be one, two, three, four, five. I'm allowed one more piece. <laughs> so let's say I had a piece up here. Same thing. Go to create a sketch. Click where I want to put it. It could have been sticking out here. It could be up here. It could be anywhere. Use my rectangle tool. 
go across one by one. Oh, I got it that time. Finish the sketch and extrude up. I could have done the same thing if the piece were here or here or here. Just click in that area, add a sketch, and extrude. And if you rotate around, you can see your part. Oops. So that's how it works. We're not trying to do them individually. We're trying to do them all as one. I could have started a new sketch right in the beginning and drawn all this with the line tool. The line tool comes up when you create a sketch and you just go down, across, up, across, back down, and then up, close it, and extrude that whole thing one inch. But however you see it is perfect. Um, it depends on you know how you visualize it as you're trying to build it. So that's just one example. There's a lot more we can do and we'll do some more in class. Let's um, left click away from the object, go across it, hit appearance, and let's give it a color. I'm gonna do blue. What do I got? I don't want the download ones. They take forever. I'll use this guy. Just drag it over. Type in a color, drag it over. If there's a color you don't have, you could just pick one you do have, or you can right click, duplicate, and then right click on the new duplicate, edit it to the color you want. You have to change the name and then drag that one onto your object. It's really important that you don't edit the one you're using because then when you take certification, if color comes up, you won't have it. All right, close that. So the next step in your lesson is to make a drawing sheet. You can't make a drawing sheet unless you've saved your file. So I'm gonna go to save. I'm gonna call this practice piece. You should call it blue piece, red piece, yellow piece, um, but I'm not gonna use this one, so I'm gonna save it. If you look, it saves right in your folder because it knows where you are. We wanna make a drawing sheet. So design, drawing from design. Click that. We can use 17 by 11 for now. We'll change that later. We'll do some smaller ones to fit in our, our books. Um, but for now, we'll leave it to the B size sheet in inches. Um, I think ASME is fine. I'm not sure. I'll keep it like that for now. That's what I usually use. And click OK. It takes a minute to populate, depending on how fast the Wi-Fi is. I'm at home, so I should be a little quicker than school. There we go. And you should see it's going to come up with the front view, however you built it when you made it. So let me look at there. So if this is my front view, it's just however you built it. So see that? And now when I'm over here, it's like hovering. Oh, I lost it. <laughs> okay. If you happen to lose it like me, go to base view. And it just, it comes back up over here on the left side, base view. Okay, so it should be the front view that comes up. And if you're not sure, click this. If you don't like your front view, just put in what they have for now. We can fix it later. So place my front view right here. I feel like that's a little small. So I'm going to play with that scale, maybe one to one over here on the right side. Let's see if that looks a little better. That does look better, doesn't it? Okay, one to one front, and we're going to click OK. So now we want to add the other views. We're going to go to projected view. It's up here under drawing, left click. You always start with your parent, which would be the front view. Click there, drag up. If you don't drag up enough, you get the wrong shape, right? So drag up, left click, come back down, drag to the right, left click, then pull up and get to the corner. They should be lined up like this. I'm gonna left click. I'm going to move anywhere else. I'm not clicking. I'm going to move anywhere away from these guys so I don't click them on accident. Right click and click OK. So they should be lined up. ISO, top, front, and side views. If you need to move them, you can move the parent view. Do you see how they're connected, the three of them? Because you started with that, they'll stick together. The ISO view can always do its own thing. So it's by itself. But if you need to move these guys, you don't like where you put them, now's a good time to do that. They should never go over your title block. You can change this and update this. That's another lesson for another day. And this guy, we're not trying to show hidden views, hidden lines. Those are hidden lines. We're not trying to show them. So we're going to double click him, her, it, <laughs> and then come over here and click this little guy. I think it says shaded. Mine's not saying anything, but I just remember. 
So click that, there you go, shade it and close. Sometimes it doesn't show the color until you close that button. And this is a drawing sheet. One more thing you have to do is add dimensions. So we want the overall height. I want to know how tall this is. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Let me try that again. Dimensions. I'm going to click my top line, my bottom line. I'm going to go over here. It's really tiny, but it's three inches tall. Um, I want to know how tall this one is. We really only need three dimensions, overall height, overall width, and overall depth. So I'm going to click the bottom. Okay, so I've got three inches by three inches. That's a nice size. And then I want to know how wide it is. It should go underneath here, but there's really no space. So I'm going to go right here. And that gives me everything I need to know about the shape. I never put dimensions on the ISO view. Um, a rare occasion I could do that, a really intricate part, like a Formula One race car. Um, and I can, I can work over here if I need to, and I can work over here. We try to stay inside. We try not to work out here in the margins. We try not to work out here as far as dimensions go. That's it. So make sure you have this for each of your parts, and you just save that. When you save it, it automatically calls it whatever you called your first one, and it adds the word drawing. So if you just leave it like that, you're good. It's in the same folder. And you can double check by coming over to your folder. Cool beans, thanks for watching. Have a great day today.